which is better? Uh, what this question is asking is whether uh, soldier fly larva or mealworms are better for chickens. Um, my answer, just for transparency, I run a mealworm farm. These are all full of mealworms. Uh, my answer is that it depends. And what it depends on is what we're going to talk about. So we'll talk about that while I hydrate the beetles here. Uh, so for full transparency, uh, I raise and sell live mealworms in the U.S. So all the stuff you're seeing about dried larva, uh, in this case, it was dried soldier fly larva, but there's also a product that uh, is sold that's dried uh, mealworms. Um, I am not competing with those folks. Uh, it's not something I do. I cannot raise uh, live mealworms and then dehydrate them and sell them to you uh, at any price comparable to what you can currently buy. Even with tariffs. Right? There's a 10% tariff on, on stuff right now coming in uh, from China. 98% uh, of the imported um, dried larvas are from China. Uh, but even with 10%, it's no, like it would need to be 200, 300%, probably higher um, for it to be something that small businesses like mine could compete with. Uh, what I sell are live. And so from a dried perspective, what's best uh, is really dependent on what you're using them for. So for poultry folks, uh, let's just cover price first. Uh, soldier fly larvae are going to be cheaper, or they should be cheaper, um, because their life cycle is much shorter, uh, and they're much better at eating waste uh, than mealworms are. Uh, so uh, the life cycle of the soldier fly larvae uh, are about 10 to 14 days in optimal conditions, right? So that's somebody who's raising them purposefully, knows how to do it, is really good at it. Uh, those larvae will go from an egg to a neonate, which is like a baby larva, uh, all the way to a harvested size larva that's dried and sold in 10 to 14 days. Whereas mealworms take anywhere from two to four months, right? Much longer cycle to get to a harvestable size. Um, the other thing that you need to take into account from a what's best perspective, well, let me finish out price, sorry. Uh, what that equates to is your soldier fly larva should be much cheaper than the mealworms because your production costs are lower, right? Because you can crank through more volume in a space with soldier fly than with mealworms, okay? Um, the second reason is soldier fly larvae are much, much better at eating waste products. And typically waste products are much cheaper. And so waste products can range from, you know, the quote unquote good stuff, uh, which is like pre-consumer food waste, the stuff that makes it to a distributor. You know, let's, let's say like pears, they make it to the distributor, but for whatever reason, they're outside the tolerances that are acceptable for humans to consume them. They haven't gotten to the table of a human yet. So that's the pre-consumer food waste. And they're rejected for sale to humans. Those pears uh, can then be fed to soldier fly. Uh, and the soldier fly will just thrive on it, right? They'll, they'll grow. And the cost of that is pretty low because they're rejected products. There's, not, there's nothing else you can do with it, right? Um, mealworms will eat those pears, but they don't eat them as fast. And so it's much more difficult to, um, like from a rearing perspective, I'm raising all these mealworms, it's much more difficult for me to integrate food waste into a system like this because they don't eat it as fast. It's gonna be more prone to mold. Uh, and problems, um, grain mites, <clears throat> excuse me. So in the U.S., there's an acceptable, an acceptable level of insects that can be in and on our food, right? And grain mites are one of those things. And unfortunately, grain mites can destroy a mealworm colony. With soldier fly larvae, if you get grain mites in it, you would just 
get rid of that batch, essentially. Uh, it's not worth fighting them or messing with them because they're such a quick turnaround. You can just start a new batch and get back up and running. Um, so mealworms require a much different rearing process than the soldier fly. And it's much easier to use waste streams. Now, one of the things I'll factor in now, and again, folks are going to probably try to say I'm a bit biased because I raise mealworms and sell mealworms. However, I have just started soldier fly larvae again. I did it back in 2023, raised them, sold them live. Um, my intent is to do that again, uh, get that up and running. But I don't, I'm not going to sell dried stuff. Again, it's not financially feasible. Um, the other thing is I run my business very differently than a lot of other businesses. Um, so from a credibility perspective, if you'd like to understand why I'm talking through all this stuff, uh, check out the playlist on my YouTube channel, uh, called salary of a meal and farmer. And I'll walk you through like my perspective on stuff. Um, the prime example that I'll give you here is, uh, I pay my employees first before I pay myself and I pay them better than I pay myself. Um, and so I walk through all of that uh, on my on that playlist to explain why and how I'm able to pull that off uh, and why it's important to me. Um, so I say all that because uh, I'm going to now tell you what you need to be thinking about from a what's better perspective uh, when it comes to uh, dried soldier fly and mealworms or live soldier fly and mealworms. Um, I mentioned that soldier fly can eat waste. Uh, soldier fly larvae will also eat literal manure, pure literal manure. Uh, I've tested this myself. Uh, at one point in 2023, when I had soldier fly larva, I also had quail. And I took some of that quail manure and put soldier fly neonates in it, those little babies, uh, and they grew just fine. They ate the manure, they grew to a harvestable size, and I was able to feed those to my quail. Now I tell you that because what you need to be thinking about is what your insects have been raised on and whether that matters to you. Now, from a dried perspective, what I'll tell you is that they have to cook those things, right? Like it's a live insect, you have to uh, microwave it or oven cook it or something like that uh, in order to get it to that dried state. And generally speaking, in order to do that, you're going to get it to a high enough temperature, ideally, to destroy the pathogens and bacteria that may be present uh, if those insects have been fed on a waste stream like manure. Now, that's a very broad and general statement because that's a big assumption that whoever's dehydrating these, these larvae, if they are using waste streams, uh, if they're cooking them to the appropriate temperature for the appropriate length of time to get rid of those pathogens. Uh, if they're even using those you know, manure type waste streams in the first place. Um, there is plenty of post-consumer food waste um, that is not being taken advantage of both in the US and abroad. So uh, again, I'm not implying that any particular company is doing anything bad. And also, it may not be bad. If we can use manure and turn it into usable protein. I mean, think about from a, a natural perspective, chickens eat insects naturally. And where are you going to find insects like soldier fly? Are you going to find them just crawling around in the grass? No, you're going to find them in decaying things. That's what the soldier fly is built to do. It's built to find things that are decaying, lay the eggs, eat, hatch and eat very fast and turn that stuff back into usable protein for nature. And so your chickens naturally are going out and finding soldier fly uh, in that stuff anyway. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that you should now actively be feeding waste soldier fly larvae to your chickens. I'm just saying in general, um, that's how you 
try part two. Because uh, I got a little long-winded there. It happened. Um, so from a waste stream perspective, uh, those insects are eating whatever it, whatever it is that they're provided um, and then hopefully being processed at the appropriate temperatures uh, and the appropriate length of time in order to kill any of that stuff off. Um, and I have no proof or validation that anyone's doing anything uh, uh, bad, right? Let's assume positive intent. Uh, let's assume good, positive products. Um, and then just validate that by asking questions about how they're processed, what they're raised on, et cetera. Uh, I can prove to you right now what I'm raising things on. So I've got mealworms on wheat bran, wheat bran. Uh, I buy it in 50 pound bags, 40 pound bags. They just downsized them. Uh, Seamer right here in the U S uh, working on an organic option uh, from Illinois, seeing good results on that so far. So hopefully going to move to that uh, if all that pans out well. Um, and then from a soldier fly larva perspective, which is this test stack right here, uh, what this is being fed is post-consumer food waste, so food waste out of people's kitchens, uh, that has gone through a process uh, to make it into Bokashi, so beneficial, beneficial bacteria uh, in an anaerobic state, no oxygen, uh, sealed up. It basically ferments, um, you know, for lack of a better explanation there. And then I'm feeding that to the soldier fly larva. Uh, and so we'll see how that pans out. Uh, but post-consumer food waste is, as long as you get it before it just absolutely goes rancid. Um, the soldier fly larva, in my experience, back in 2023, eat through that pretty quickly uh, and take care of it. Uh, and so selling those insects live is what I intend to do. Um, but the dried ones work, work perfectly fine uh, if you don't like the ick factor, right? But the second, maybe third thing, I don't know if I'm on the second or third thing now, uh, is from a better perspective, uh, you want to look at your costs. And for poultry folks, soldier fly larvae are going to be cheaper uh, and more efficient and effective for you because their turnaround time is so much shorter. That stack is going to be done in 10 to 14 days. There are stacks back there that are three and a half months old, right? And so I can, I can crank through more volume with the soldier fly and have more sellable product, but because I can have that, have that you know, more sellable product, the price is going to go down, okay? Uh, so I think soldier fly larvae are a better option for poultry people, um, but there's also a nutritional component. Uh, I believe that soldier fly larvae have more calcium. Calcium is a beneficial thing for uh, both reptiles and poultry, but you don't want to overdo it. You can balance that with mealworms. Um, so there's that aspect of it as well. Okay. Uh, go either way. You're not hurting me by buying the dried stuff because I'm not going to produce it. Um, I would like to be able to, but it costs me more. So I harvest these things live and I store them. Uh, so these guys got harvested yesterday. Uh, they're eating through a little bit of food and then all that stuff goes into cold storage to slow them down. Uh, and then I refresh them on Mondays, ship them out uh, and people get live mealworms. I'll do the same thing with the soldier fly. Uh, if I were to go through the process of dehydrating them, I would have to take that stack and that stack, I used to do this back in 2022, 2021. I tested it with a, an industrial microwave dehydrator. Um, the labor and the time and the energy, uh, electricity, uh, along with the fact that I can sell these for a better price when they're live versus dried, I have no intention to, to move into dry. Uh, I'll tinker around with it. Um, it might be a way to deal with any overflow or extra that I have because these are live insects. It's not like I can just hold them in stasis forever, uh, it might be beneficial to have something to do with them. But from a better perspective, what I'm getting at is if you don't like live wiggling things, dried is perfectly fine, okay? Um, just be mindful about who you're buying from, ask questions of what they're raised on, ask them if they have any publications or if they're open about their farming practices. Um, and I wouldn't be turned off if somebody tells you we're, we're, we're raising them, uh, the soldier fly larva in particular, we're raising them on food waste. I would just ask questions about it. How do you process it? How, do you, how does that work? What are you using? Uh, because it is a good way to utilize waste and get it back into the system, the system of things that need nutrition, uh, get it back into the system for things to use that protein and the other nutrients in those insects.
Uh, I haven't even touched on frass yet. So both soldier fly larvae and mealworms, all insects, they produce frass, which is their poop. Haven't even talked about that yet. Uh, this is just a focus on the larva. So from a witch's better perspective, hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, I'll be here.